So let's write the structure for this compound. Write the structure for this compound. Okay. Well, you drew the parent chain well. That was good. We know that there's nine carbons in the parent, and you did something else that was very good, which is that you numbered the parent chain. We've seen how good it is to actually physically number the parent chain. All right. Uh, it looks like you're just having a little bit of a mental block for the last steps. Once we see how to do it, it's not that tricky. So um, what location should this substituent be in? At the four. Yeah. Here's the number four. Okay. And how many carbons are in that substituent? Just one, right? Uh, so, oh, two. Yeah. So oh. men eat. E is the second yeah. in the list. Oh, yeah. So obviously, um, is your test tomorrow? No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, obviously, one thing you want to do before then is just keep writing down this list of roots over and over until it's easy for you to remember their order. And maybe during the test, you should write them down once and then just refer to them. Okay. So men eat pickled beets. So E comes second. Um, so how many carbons should be here? Two. So we would add those two over there. Does that make sense? All right, and what about the rest? Oh, so then I, the, the three, five mm -hmm. thing is confusing. Like, okay, the, well, so now, so how many substituents are there total in this molecule? What's the total number of substituents in this? Two. Actually, three. There's one ethyl group and there's two methyl groups. Oh, yeah, dimethyl tells you that there's two of those. So there's three substituents total. So once we've drawn the parent, now we have to put in each of those three substituents. Well, we put in one so far. Now let's put in one of the methyl groups. Well, where does one of the methyl groups go? On the three. Good. And how many carbons are in that methyl group? One. Okay. So I think you might have left the, I think that you left that out of your picture. Yeah. So we should put this methyl group on the number three carbon. Okay. Again, it's really best to do these in pencil because it's all, um, clear that we're going to be making some mistakes as we go through. Um, and then we have one more substituent to put in. Um, and where are we going to put that last substituent? On the five. Good. And how many carbons are there? How many carbons should there be in that substituent? One. Yeah, you didn't sound too happy about that, but it's a methyl group, so it has only one carbon. So I put that here. I guess what confused me was, like, I just, I assume, like, dimethyl, it'll be, like, two on the five? Ah, okay. But so, um, so when we say di, we don't mean, we mean that there are two methyl groups in the molecule. We don't mean that they're on the same carbon. Right. Who, so, how do you know how many methyl groups there are from the di? How do you know where they are from the locators? The numbers tell us where the substituents are. Well, here the numbers told us that one of the substituents was on the number three and one was on the five. If they were both on the five, what would the locators have been? Just five. Five, five. Oh, that's right. Right? Five. Remember that we've seen that when there's two on the same carbon, you have to give two locators. Right. Okay. So um, it, it's conceivable that they could both have been on the same carbon, but then this would have been five, five dimethyl. So we simply have a separate locator for each substituent. Okay, so it's a matter of just following the instructions, kind of, when we go through this name. By the way, notice the conventions here. Numbers are separated with commas and everything else is separated with dashes. 
The only time you use commas is between two numbers. Otherwise, you use dashes to separate things. Okay. Uh, so I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, for the die and the tri and the tetra, like that doesn't go into alphabetical. That's a good question. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I should actually know that, but I don't. I should know that too. Um, I think it doesn't go into the alphabetization. Boy, I've done that a hundred times. I think that that does not go into the alphabetization, but I gotta look that up. Yeah, what, so what did I say? So die, tie, and tetra are not considered in alphabetical ordering. Die, tie, and die, try, and tetra are not considered in alphabetical ordering, like sec and chert. chemistry. So there's a lot more to organic chemistry than just naming things. But for a, chemist for a general chemistry class, that's one of the main topics you're going to get into. Okay, so how would we, uh, so let's draw the structure of this. Let's draw the structure of this compound. So you drew the heptane, then on the number four carbon, we have a butyl group. Um, so it's got four carbons, but the initial carbon is connected to three other carbons in the substituent. Okay, that looks like a chicken butt. Okay, yeah, that's right. So that didn't take you guys much time, but that's correct. Okay. Okay, I'm um, sorry, four carbons, one, two, three, four. Okay, sorry. I just want to There's four sure. carbons in the substituent. Right, okay. That's why it's called butyl. Right. But the first carbon in the substituent is connected to three other carbons in the substituent. That's why it's called tert butyl. So the okay. Okay. All right, and I underline this because this would be in italics in the book. This would also be called 4 T butyl. But it doesn't, like I drew my chicken foot up, it doesn't matter which way. Right? That's fine. Actually, um, it's a little bit better to draw the bonds pointing away from the, ax uh, from the axes. Because if you draw it like this, so we're not trying to get the exact geometry here. Right. But this is a little bit misleading. Remember, these are really 109.5 bond right. angles. Right. So this is a little bit misleading to write it like this, because this makes it look like just a 60 degree bond angle. Okay. I don't think it matters for these compounds, because we're not really trying to get the geometry. But there are some problems where it really messes you up to put the bond line notation like this. Okay. So yeah, it's better. So don't put the substituents like this. How would I? You always want it to be pointing away from the vertex. It's hard to describe in words. But the substituents should be pointing like this, not like this, okay. and bond line notation. This is better than this. Okay. That's actually a common student mistake. That's what we're uh, discussing. All right, so this would be a, a decent way to write substituents if they were here. So yeah, this is better than writing it like this. Okay. Although if you're just doing a pure naming problem, maybe it doesn't make too much difference. Okay.